what is architecture? We believe that architecture is the art of organizing matter and we love to think that uh, a definition of architecture could be that architecture is the sum of matter and information. In certain way, as architects, we are, we are manipulating uh, matter, we are sending matter, we are trying to transform the performance and the quality of matter and the question we're, which is raising now for architects is how could we use information technology to produce better matter, uh, simulation technology in order to increase our capability to transform the, 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 the quality of matter uh, and how to use also all kinds of devices to simulate uh, notions of light, notion of ambiences, uh, 3D tools allow today to very fairly easily uh, introduce these notions. And I think that's, that would be a very interesting step for architects to understand that information is not this, just a stable, static, uh, that ma sorry, matter is not a stable, static um, uh, product, but it's really, a, it's really an assembly. And the logic of assembly is based on design. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have, we developed uh, devices which allow us to bring information knowledge inside of this assembly of matter. So you already started to answer what can architecture do with manipulation of matter? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. We, that the, the answer for, the answer for uh, what can architecture do is transform our, our relationship to, to matter and our relationship to shape through information technology. So, um, the objective is more an architectural objective. Uh, what about people or society, or does that come into your design? Yeah, we 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 feel in in a lot of our project that there is a strong uh, uh, shift today in the way we use spaces uh, because of mobility, because of issue of a, uh, of um, of um, po polyvalence and transformation of spaces. Uh, in most of the projects we're doing, we're forced to think uh, of the space as as a as a as a space of potential instead of a, of a mere uh, space of, of usage. So we we're trying basically in our project to to rethink the way you use the space, the functions you you inhabit uh, today, and it's very imp it's very clear that as in teaching environment as well as in work spaces, you you start bringing all kinds of uh, attitude, you know, attitude from, uh, from outdoor attitude, out attitude from home uh, that are now co colonizing uh, workspaces and, and uh, teaching or learning environments. And I think that's very important to integrate this, this, uh, this, uh, this knowledge of, of uh, migrating functions and usages in order to design spaces. So uh, uh, we were currently on, um, working on a project for a new uh, research uh, lab in uh, for climate in Grenoble, and the whole question is how to to basically bring um, uh, bring the researcher to communicate and to exchange in informal spaces. And we are very interested in this idea that uh, architecture doesn't happen. I mean, the uh, research and knowledge doesn't just happen in an office space, but it also happens in the corridor, it's also happening in all of those kind of in-between environments. Some, some people call that virtual space, uh, we do call that informal space, you know, that triggers basically a relationship between people as well as uh, uh, exchange, and sometimes discovery, and sometimes discussion, sometimes curiosity come out of these spaces and really help us to progress and to innovate. And what is your architectural position? Um, we are we're currently uh, strongly interested in this idea that architecture uh, in the future will be uh, places where we could produce, consume and produce energy. Uh, we are we're very interested in this, this uh, topic of uh, Jeremy Rifkin, the third industrial revolution, where basically in the future architecture might become the kind of decentralized uh, places to produce and to consume uh, energy. Uh, today, I mean, the, the internet technology basically helped us, helped 
all of us to become uh, as much a producer and actor of the network, as much as consumer of this network. And, and, and we're at, at the very beginning of a, of a new era where, uh, that, that we call the Internet of Energy. Uh, basically, we'll be able soon to share and to, uh, to produce together uh, energy. And I think that's very interesting in, in relationship to this notion of zero energy building. And that's one of the focus we're, we're targeting at the office, which is to, to think that very soon, all the buildings that we will produce will not be very low consumption based, but they will also produce energy and and lean um, or um, um, reach the zero energy level. And when you look at that, uh, clearly buildings will produce energy. They will basically uh, uh, store energy. They will exchange energy. They would recycle energy and and the, the ability of the network to basically exchange and share this energy would allow us to create a total relationship with uh, the urban environment, with uh, the network of large uh, centralized uh, energy system. Mm -hmm. And it's a notion that's particularly interesting for us in France. Uh, as you know, 75% of energy is based on nuclear plants which is the strongest uh, nuclear plant production of electricity in, uh, in, in Europe, in the world. Um, and today we're facing this terribly important, no, important uh, question. What could we do with those nuclear plants? Uh, they are dangerous plants. The, 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 the regulation is showing that we need to invest more and more money to secure them. Uh, and 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 our our position is that we strongly believe that architects will be part of this equation and will be part of the, of the solution in allowing buildings to be partially active of this new decentralized production network, and I think that's that would be a very fantastic um, uh, fantastic uh, goal for us. The only problem is that everything needs to be built. Today we are basically still having windows that we have to open by hand when it's too, too, too hot inside. Uh, we need to plug all kinds of devices on all time on the network while we only need them 5% of the time. Uh, so, so it seems that uh, there is an issue of, of design but also a, an issue of pro produce uh, components, architectural components, and today we have very little uh, companies and manufacturers that are, are really thinking about that. And we have a we have a fairly um, fairly interesting um, um, network um, uh, developing now in France called the what called IoT, the Energy uh, Internet of Things, uh, l'Internet des Objets. Uh, which is, uh, which strongly, strangely, strangely enough, we have a lot of French actors of this network, of this uh, research, which is uh, interesting because I know that in, in Germany, in Austria, you have also fantastic uh, engineers and researchers on this field. Um, and I think th those, uh, those young uh, companies are, are starting to create uh, devices that allow to, um, to, to help, I mean, to, to help the user to uh, to interact with algorithms, and those algorithms will help you to program uh, the space, and it will help you to 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 to, to be smart about the way you use uh, the spaces and the way you use energy in the space. And I think that's very interesting. That today it seems that we have all the components to 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 become to to arrive to this next uh, level of relationship between architecture and energy. But things are not happening yet. So maybe the nuclear crisis will be part of this interesting uh, uh, reflection uh, and, and innovation. All right, and last question. Uh, what is your design method? We, uh, we are um, increasingly interested in, in collaborative design. Uh, we believe that this, uh, this uh, era of the architect as the mastermind of a building is over. Uh, clearly, we rely. I mean, uh, we rely more and more on a larger team 
of, uh, of skills uh, to design buildings. Um, buildings, especially in France, it's, it's, in, it's, it's important to... We often realize that buildings are becoming increasingly complex organism. Uh, you need to be safe on seismic issue, you need to be safe on, in case of, a, of, a, of fire, uh, you need to be smart on the way you interact with users, uh, and all of these levels are basically uh, transforming what we, we used to know as the kind of uh, architectural brief, uh, the program, uh, as something pretty fairly complex to, 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 to develop and to, and to put in space. Um, and I think we're, we're trying now to increase more and more people within the team um, and, and, and develop basically a series of um, what we call design thinking um, sessions where we, as a, as a whole, we use architectural design as a way to trigger innovation within those different parameters of this complex brief that the building has to um, has to has to respond and and to to answer uh, the other issue we were we have more and more interested in this in this notion of biomimetism um, we realized that most of the buildings we're designing are designed fairly fast sometimes in a couple of weeks for buildings that will be there at least 10 years for sure uh, 30 years sometimes 100 maybe 150 years um, and, and uh, it's clear that it's very hard for designers to, to develop a strong level of innovation on a short, such of a short time. Um, and we realize that in a lot of cases, you go faster uh, looking at existing uh, systems developed by natural processes uh, because they've been developed on 3.5 millions of years. And, and they are like result of a process of a kind of co-adaptation process with nature. And as architects, we're trying to have those buildings in a couple of weeks adapt in the same manner to, to the environment and to, the, to, to, the, to, to nature, basically. And, and I believe that's not, that's not possible. That's not really possible. Even with advanced uh, modeling um, uh, tools, it's very hard to say that in a couple of weeks we'll design a, a very performance building. So I, I, that's why looking at the way nature adjusted this notion of uh, adaptation to the context or to the environment or the, to the climate or to uh, geographical uh, localization, uh, I think it's it's sometimes a very good way to shorten uh, the design process and to go further in the development of the of the project.